In this lecture, we will consider how to modify Kong trees to implement an append method with a constant running time. Such an append method is crucial for implementing combiners efficiently. The first step in implementing a combiner is providing a plus equals method. Assuming that a Kong list based combiner internally holds a Kong list object, the plus equals method could insert an element by creating a single element tree. This single element tree can then be concatenated with an existing tree. Let's append the element 7 as a single tree. To append the single tree of height 1 into the larger tree, we need to descend to one of its leaves on the right side and update the path from the root to that leaf. Since the depth of the tree is bound by O of log n, the running time of the plus equals method would also be O of log n. Logarithmic running time is not bad, but it could be better. We would prefer if plus equals was a constant time method, as plus equals is invoked every time the processor adds a new element to the combiner. Surprisingly enough, it turns out that this is possible. However, we will need to relax the previous invariance on this data structure, so we will extend the conch tree with a new node type. The idea will be to represent the result of a plus equals operation differently. For this reason, we will introduce a new type of a node called append. The append node has exactly the same structure as the conch node does. It has a left and a right subtree, and its level and size are defined in exactly the same way as they were for conch nodes. However, we will not impose the previous balance invariant on the append nodes. We will allow arbitrary difference in levels between the left and the right child. So trees like this will be allowed. In this example, the left and the right subtrees have heights 5 and 3 and the difference between them is 2, but since they are connected by an append node, this is fine. With this newly introduced node type, here is one possible implementation of append leaf. This method first creates a single node. And then it creates a new append node to link them together. This method allocates two objects in total, so the total number of computational steps it takes is constant and does not depend on the size of the tree. Its running time is really O of 1. Unfortunately, a tree created this way is obviously imbalanced. If we are to later use it for parallelism or concatenations, we need to somehow transform the data structure back into a format that does not have any append nodes. Question is, can we do this reasonably quickly, for example in logarithmic time? We claim that this is not possible, and here is why. After we add n elements to the tree this way, we will have n append nodes in total. Therefore, we would have to traverse and process all those nodes to eliminate them from the tree and once again establish the balance invariance. The conversion to a normal Kong tree would have to take at least O of n steps. The fundamental problem here is that we are essentially still building a linked list with append nodes, so we need to link these nodes more intelligently. In what follows, we will make sure that if the total number of elements in the tree is n, then there are never more than log n append nodes in the data structure. To understand how to achieve this, let's consider a seemingly unrelated task that we know very well, and that is counting in a binary number system. How do we count in the standard positional binary number system? Let's see an example. We start with 0, which is represented with a single digit in the binary number system. This digit is at 0th position and has the weight 2 to the power of 0. Let's increment it by 1. If we add 1 to the 0 digit, it is incremented and becomes 1. To convert this number to the decimal system, we need to multiply the single digit 1 with its weight we get the same representation 1 in the decimal number system. If we again add 1 to this digit, we can no longer increment it. 
Instead, we carry the digit 1 to the next position with the weight 2 to the power of 1. To convert this number to the decimal system, we multiply 1 with 2 to the power of 1 and add it to 0 multiplied by 2 to the power of 0. This time we get the number 2 in the decimal number system. We continue counting like this and increase the least significant digit again. We get the number 1 1 which corresponds to the decimal number 3. In the next step we need to perform two carry operations. First we carry over the least significant digit and then since the next digit is also 1 we repeat the carry process. We get the digit 100 or the decimal number 4. The binary number system has two important properties. First, to count up to n in the binary number system we will have to do of n amount of work. If we count the number of digits we flipped to get to n we will see that it is less than 2 times n. In the previous example, it is not incidental that we flipped exactly 7 digits to get to the number 4. The second property is that a number n requires O of log n digits. If this were not the case, it would be really hard to write big numbers. Here is a sanity check. Number 4 is written as 100. Number 8 is twice as large but takes only an additional digit. Number 16 is again twice as large and again requires only one more digit. So while the number grows exponentially, the number of digits grows linearly. This is the same as saying that the number grows linearly and the number of digits grows logarithmically. Now observe that there is a correspondence between a digit at position k and a conch tree with level k. When we link two trees with level k, we get a tree with level k plus 1, just as adding two digits at position k becomes a digit at position k plus 1. If we start with a tree at level 0 and append another such tree, we can link them to a tree with level 1 in one computational step. If we again add a tree at level 0, we can add it directly to the empty position for the level 0 tree. There is no need to link anything in this step. Next time we add a tree at level 0, we will first have to link the two trees at level 0, which corresponds to the first carry operation, and then link the two trees at level 1, which corresponds to the second carry operation. Linking the trees in the same order as we count in a binary number system results in a similar pair of properties. First, to add n leaves like this takes O of n work meaning that on average adding each leaf requires O of 1 work. Second, storing n leaves requires a logarithmic amount of append nodes. We will use the append nodes to store our binary number. In this binary number representation the zero digit will correspond to a missing tree and the one digit will correspond to an existing tree. For example, assume that we have the following trees. In this append list, the trees with levels 4, 3 and 1 exist and the trees with the levels 2 and 0 are not present. The corresponding append list would look as follows. This corresponds to the following binary number 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. Note that we do not explicitly represent the zero digits they are encoded as missing trees. Using this idea, let's re-implement the append leaf method, which this time appends the single tree ys to the tree xs. This method first pattern matches on xs to handle the trivial cases. When the first tree is empty, it just returns ys. When it gets two single trees, just links them together or links an inner node and ys into an append node. If the tree xs is already an append node to start with, the work is delegated to the recursive append method. The append node essentially implements counting in a binary number system. 
If the tree bias has a level smaller than the right subtree of access, a new append node is created. Here is an example. Otherwise, the right subtree of XS and YS are linked into a normal tree ZS. In our example, if we now append another tree of level 0, we need to link them together into ZS of level 1, and then recursively call append again. The recursion then repeats the process. The remaining two cases handle the scenario in which the left subtree is not append, which happens if we manage to push the tree all the way to the bottom of this append list. To summarize, we have implemented an immutable data structure with amortized constant time append operation and logarithmic time concatenation. Although we did not show how to transform a conk tree with append nodes into a regular conk tree in logarithmic time, we note that this should be straightforward to do. This requires concatenating the trees from the append list together. We leave this task to you as an optional exercise. In the next lecture, we will use the O of 1 append operation as a basis for an efficient mutable data structure used to implement a combiner.